Design to me is, you know, it's a part of everyday life. It affects, you know, how you eat, breathe, sleep, wake up, do your everyday life. And so I think making, making the world a better place uh, for everyone is, is important. My name is Jennifer Sebecki. I am the Executive Director of Designs for Dignity. There's such a tight budget that's uh, affiliated with program and operations, and many nonprofits don't have the extra budget to improve their facilities, so they're working on a shoestring budget as it is for programming, and that's where Designs for Dignity really steps in. We take whatever budget there is and work to maximize that, you know, three and a half time fold, so we can turn, you know, ten thousand dollars into thirty-five to fifty thousand dollars with donated furnishings, materials, our design time. So we work with affordable housing community health centers, food pantries, battered women's shelters, uh, youth drop-in centers. We've done safe houses for uh, LGBT youth. So we have uh, a warehouse in the Merchandise Mart where we house donations from trade shows, showrooms. Uh, we'll have designers' clients call to offer us a donation and we utilize a, a moving service to pick up those donations warehouse them, and then they get redeployed in a design-driven way on the projects by the design teams. We really harness the volunteer talent of volunteer interior designers, installers, uh, you know, carpenters, whoever might need to be on a project at any given time, and they give back a day of service, or we've got project volunteers that will volunteer on a project over the course of three years if it's, you know, from the ground up, and uh, we wouldn't be who we are without that volunteer uh, core. The space was not functioning well and the colors were totally wrong. It was dingy and cluttered and uh, there were just a lot of places that uh, needed improvement. I get enjoyment out of giving back because I think people deserve good design and that's I think what Designs for Dignity is about. People who are not you know, able to can access it and it's a win. We are very attuned to the sensitivities of the populations that we serve and we work with our volunteers to orient them around uh, different challenges that might be foreseen with working with various populations. Um, so I think it's important you know, that, um, that our design team is equipped to, to meet the need that's there based on the population that they're working with on any given project. We started working with Designs for Dignity for the foster home, which is the home we're at right now. Um, designs came in and really suggested paint colors and furniture, and they really got to know the population that we serve and what colors would be most soothing for adults with autism. They really took the clients that we serve into consideration with really all the touches and stuff that they did with the homes. The environment that a human being is put into, I mean, psychologically has a big impact no matter who you are. Of course, if you're going to have adults with autism or if it's children, it's going to have a different impact and you have to look at all those things. And that's part of a design professional's job to know what those are. Color matters, movement, patterns that are too busy, the thing that hits me the most is this is their home. This is where they wake up. This is where they go to bed. This is where they have their meals. They want a midnight snack. They walk into the kitchen. I mean, this is their home. This isn't just something that was um, slapped together without that in mind. It was definitely well-researched, well-thought-about, and well-executed. It's, it's great for me to see the end result and to know that, you know, what my 60 hours a week put into operating the, the organization, it really makes a difference for so many. I think in, you know, in the past couple years we've served over 30,000 individuals through our design services and I hope to grow that number even more.